You ever hate a person so much you wish they'd just keel over and die? And in the off chance that they do, that's revenge enough, right? Well, not for this guy. He's gotta dig up that corpse, put it in a public place, and yell at it for days. Oh, humans. I'm Vibby, and on this episode of A Space Alien Explains, The Cadaver Trial. So let me set the stage here a bit. Because if you have to put a dead body on trial, there must have been a cluster of other things leading up to that kind of crazy. The 9th to the 10th century in Italy was not a good time to be alive. Charlemagne's empire was going down the shitter, popes were being elected and dying immediately afterwards, and corruption was aplenty. And in the middle of all this was a bishop named Formosus. Formosus was pretty good at his job. He was a successful missionary known for spreading Catholicism throughout the Bulgarian Empire. And, uh, for some reason, the current pope at the time, John VIII, wasn't too fond of that. I guess in his mind, hypercompetency means you're a threat, because he accused Formosus of trying to be bishop of two places at once, as well as openly aspiring to be pope, both of which are illegal. He told Formosus he was no longer allowed in the club, but I think the fancy word for that is excommunication. Come on, John, just let a man dream. You're going to be murdered by your own people anyhow. Formosus did eventually make it to the papacy despite it all, but let's go through the list of other popes who died in order for him to get there, shall we? As I said earlier, John VIII was murdered by his own people. He was poisoned, but then his assassin got impatient waiting for it to take effect, so he just bashed in his head with a hammer. After him was Marinus I, who let Formosus back into the club and reinstated him as bishop. After Marinus was Adrian III, who lasted about a year. And then came Stephen V, who died in 891. After Stephen V was our guy Formosus, and he managed to stay as pope for five years before dying of a stroke. Boniface VI took over, died 15 days later, and then came Stephen VI. Am I painting a clear enough picture here? Do you see why shit was totally off the rails at this time? Well, buckle in, kids. It's about to get a thousand times worse. Here comes the corpse! Stephen VI ordered Formosus' body to be exhumed to stand trial for the crimes John VIII had accused him of, seeking the papacy and ruling as bishop in more than one place. So why would a pope do something so macabre? It may have been to win favor with some political alliances who really didn't like Formosus. Or... It might have been to cover Stephen's own ass. You see, Stephen might have been guilty of the same thing Formosus was being accused of, which is the crime of being a bishop in more than one place. When Formosus was still alive, he made Stephen the bishop of Ananyi. Upon being elected the pope, Stephen had now become the bishop of Rome while also still holding that other bishop post. If Formosus was found guilty, every single one of his actions he made as pope would have been made null, including the act of making Stephen a bishop. In that case, Stephen wouldn't have been a bishop when he was elected pope. Or he was just out of his goddamn mind. You can't reason with crazy people. So in January of 897, they dug up Formosus' rotting corpse, dressed him in papal robes, and propped him up in a chair in the Basilica San Giovanni Laterano, where the trial took place. A deacon was assigned to speak for poor dead Formosus, which has got to be somewhere towards the top on the list of worst jobs ever assigned in the history of humankind. At one point during the trial, an earthquake shook the basilica, but that didn't stop Stephen from verbally tearing the corpse a new one. He's dead. He's dead, my dude. Just stop. Move on! The dead body's doing a better job of it than you are! Formosus was found guilty of all charges. No surprise there. He was stripped of his vestments, had three of his fingers chopped off, and was reburied in some random ass plot of land. And then Stephen dug up his body again and tossed him in the river. He... he really didn't know when to stop. Anyway, the people of Rome were pretty sick of his shit at this point. A mob threw Stephen in prison where he was strangled to death. The Basilica San Giovanni Laterano was then nearly destroyed in a fire. Divine retribution, perhaps? Are you ready for another list of dead popes? No? Too bad, here I go. Stephen's successor was Romanus, who annulled all the actions of his predecessor. He got overthrown real fast. After that was Theodore II, who managed to recover Formosus' body in the 20 days he managed to remain Pope. John IX came next, and he oversaw Formosus' burial at St. Peter's Cathedral, where he rests to this day. So yeah, that's the story of the corpse on trial. The really, truly astounding part of all this, in my opinion, is how many dead popes it took to make this episode. Hi guys, thanks for watching. 
Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that usual YouTube-y stuff. If there's a topic you'd like me to explore in a future episode, let me know. Thanks again. Be back next week.